Hello, welcome to another Guan in the Basement video. Today we will be discussing Pokemon investing. Now this is going to be slightly different than, um, let's say, owning a Pokemon shop or a card shop or something like that. I'm specifically going to talk about investing in Pokemon products, buying sealed or graded or whatever, uh, singles, cards, whatever, whatever the case may be, buying a product and then holding it and hoping to get a return on your investment. Um, so let's just get straight into it. The reason why I'm making this video is because I recently had a, um, I had someone reach out to me um, that is looking to purchase some product from me. And I um, kind of went on a big rant and decided to kind of outline a lot of details because they asked me some specific questions and I went on this long rant about uh, kind of like the positives and negatives of investing in Pokemon and I just kind of, I felt like it was a good opportunity to make a video about some of this information and the things, the kind of the knowledge or the information that I've accumulated over the years in uh, being a part of this whole thing. So let's get straight into it. So here I got a, uh, I got a, here's the email. So the question or questions, I'm just starting to invest in Pokemon long term. Um, I mentioned that I bought my first sealed box or it was a case he mentioned for my friend at an LCS last Monday. I don't want to miss out on this great Japanese 151 set. Okay, miss out. He's already got FOMO. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, it's just the, the wording makes it seem like that. So I, I will address that. Um, and that's why I was hoping to get one more sealed case. I watched some of your videos and it sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, anyway, it would be hard financially, but do you think this Japanese 151 set would be worth investing heavily in? It would be hard financially. Oh, I didn't even see that part. Hard financially. Okay, wow. Well, well then uh, my answer to that question is a little bit different. I didn't even notice that. Uh, I should have reread it before I answered this long thing. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll continue getting into this. Worth investing, quote, heavily in, meaning would you recommend that I pull most of my free resources to buy three more sealed three more sealed cases for a total of four, assuming that you have three to sell? Or am I just getting too eager from the get-go and should wait for a different Japanese set? There's a lot there's a lot to dissect already. Um, I'm fine waiting five to ten years before reselling, assuming that my house doesn't burn down. <laughs> okay, well yeah, true. Um, I also get nervous, like I mentioned, that I'll get stuck with these sealed boxes down the road if people don't believe they're legitimate or whatever, since I won't have a receipt from Japan or some sort of paper trail. All right, so these are all legitimate concerns, and I took a good amount of time to try and answer all of this, this um, potential patrons or clients' uh, questions. So I'm just going to try and kind of make it into a video form. Um, uh, so I, I feel like I have actual, a, a lot of additional things to add to, to my actual response now that I'm reading that he mentioned that it would be hard for him financially. But I think, I mean, I do, I guess, I guess I do address a lot of things. So I guess it could encompass that, but I, I, I kind of mentioned in the previous videos, if you're not doing well, super, like super well financially, I don't necessarily think that a relatively high risk, uh, market like Pokemon is the most ideal place to put your money. Uh, that's just me, unless you're looking to make it into a business or something like that. But um, I just, I don't know. I, I It's hard for me to recommend it for somebody just because I know what it entails. Uh, and there's plenty of videos out there talking about this. I'm not going to really get into that too much. Um, what I am going to get into is investing in the product. And I feel like there's a lot of videos talking about owning a card store, or selling Pokemon products, stuff like that. But there's very few videos about investing, specifically just buying something as a casual person, buying up some products, holding it in your house, and hoping to make money, uh, you know, profit, uh, some percentage return on that versus, you know, putting that money in the stock market or crypto or something else like that. Um, so, yeah, basically, let's start. So... Yeah, so I want to preface and uh, to say that or, that anything I say here is only based on my personal perspective, and you should always make your own decision based on what uh, you believe is right for yourself and your own research. I think that goes without saying, um, but I just want to make sure that's clear. 
Uh, with that being said, let's start with investing as Pokemon as a whole. Okay, so positives. Let's talk about investing in Pokemon as far as positive uh, positives go. Um, so I wrote here, sometimes amazing margins and profits to be made. Sometimes some sets come out and there's amazing margins, even as a seller, um, as an investor long term. I mean, look at EV Heroes. That's just the best example I can think of off the top of my head. If you bought EV Heroes uh, a year ago, you were you were two three times in your money easily. You know what I mean? So. Uh, I believe I bought a case of EV Heroes at the beginning of 2022, and by the time the same period uh, in 2023 hit, the case was worth um, three times, four times as much as what I paid for it. So that's even after eBay fees, that's that's pretty hefty. That's that's um that's a good bit of return, um, and um, that's you know, that's, that's definitely a positive for sure. But then there's also sets that aren't so great, and the margins are a lot more slim. Um, but definitely over over the co over the course of Pokemon's history, if we look at older sets, especially vintage stuff, I mean, if you keep stuff sealed, I mean, any even anything Sword and Shield, a Sun and Moon, you're golden. Uh, Sword and Shield, you're pretty much golden at this point now too. Most of the sets are out of print, English or Japanese. And I personally, I mean, I mentioned this later in the response. Uh, English is an amazing investment right now. I mean, people are super negative about it. Um, prices are like distributor level prices or even lower. Like I got uh, boxes of Paldea Evolved at like a really good price, like distribution level price. And, and like I lost money on that basically. So like, because you know, the, just the, the demand wasn't even there. So I'm just holding those boxes because I know in the future they're going to be worth way more. I'm, I'm going to make 50%, 100% on those boxes eventually. Um, so yeah, uh, and on to the next point, owning a physical product uh, versus stock or crypto that can be man manipulated. Yeah, basically stock market, crypto market, I mean, you don't really own the underlying asset. I mean, well, I guess if you put the crypto in your own wallet, I guess you technically do, but it's still having the physical product, you're guaranteed, you know, unless your house burns down or you get robbed, which is in the negatives, but having that physical product for me personally is a really nice thing to have. I have more control over the asset that I'm purchasing. And that's really what it is at this point. It's an alternative asset class. So we might as well just refer to it as such. Um, it's more fun than the stock market, crypto market. That's just me. I like looking at pretty pictures of Pokemon over looking at numbers on a chart. Um, that's just me. I mean, I'm still looking at charts either way and numbers, but at least they come with the corresponding cute Pokemon. Uh, biggest IP in the world with a consistent history of massive profits. That is absolutely correct. It's the biggest IP in the world, most profitable IP in the world. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's a great, great place to put your money, in my opinion. Um, building your own collection for a discount. Yeah, if you're making money on your investments and you're doing it for the sake of building your own collection, well, you're going to be building your own collection for much less or for free if you take the profits from your investments and, re and reinvest it into a collection, which also gains uh, equity. Um, so that's great. Um, so now on to like negatives. So the biggest issue for me and the a recurring topic in this video is going to be liquidity. Um, I think people underestimate um, the, the amount of time and effort and energy that it takes to liquidate Pokemon products or any alternative asset class product that is a physical product that needs to be shipped, sold online, etc. Um, there are many factors that tie into the amount of profit that you can make. Bigger sellers oftentimes um, are trusted, so they will make higher profits simply because people trust that they're getting a good product. If you're a smaller seller, you'll have to build that trust up, so that is something to keep in mind. So uh, liquidity is based on the ability to sell the product and ship it versus the stock market, crypto market, which allows you to just click a button and you instantly have your cash. Um, you'll also need space to store the product. Um, so. As you can see behind me, there's a lot of stuff. I actually also just got in another case of, uh, there's a case up there, V-Star, that's opened. Um, there's a, a new case of Pokemon 151 there that I just got in today. Um, so, and it looks like I'm gonna be selling through the 151 cases I already have, um, or at least some of them, because I've, I've had a few in recent inquiries. So that case is probably just gonna ship right back out to, to the potential buyer. 
Um, okay, so uh, higher higher risk space to store the product. I only talked about higher risk. So robbery, fire, difficulty to liquidate, market crashes, etc. And this kind of ties into the next point: putting all your eggs in one basket, being able to diversify your investment uh, between multiple different companies, sectors, stuff like that. So basically, you're taking on more risk by putting all your cash into one thing you're like yeah you can diversify different sets of pokemon etc um vintage versus modern stuff like that to kind of help diversify your pokemon portfolio i like to call it um however ultimately it's not the same amount of it's not a risk averse asset by any means uh if pokemon if the ip crashes if the sentiment of pokemon goes down uh, your the value of your collection um, or your investments will inevitably fall. Um, now, I think that's very unlikely. Once again, that kind of ties back into uh, Pokemon being the, one of the biggest IPs in the entire world. I think that, um, I, you know, for me personally, I know I just have to be objective about it because ultimately, yes, it is a uh, higher risk than, let's say, the stock market or crypto, depending on which ones you invest in. Um, but from my perspective, um, it seems to be a pretty surefire way to, um, I don't know, make, make some decent money and not worry too much about it. You know, I don't mind. So we'll, we'll get into more of that in a second. So let's, uh, let's just move into, um, on, on elaborating on some of the, some of the, the questions that he had. So, um, uh, positive is likely to elaborate on your questions. As far as heavily investing in Pokemon 121, it's difficult for me to give you a straight answer because I'm not sure of your particular situation. So that kind of goes for everyone. Um, I've never had problems li uh, liquidating product on eBay, but I've been using eBay for like over 10 years, 12, 13 years, something like that. And so I've built up a small, you know, not, nothing crazy, but like I've, I started liquidating stuff or like, you know, selling stuff on eBay um, and I hated the fees. So I made my website, stuff like that. So now I'm just trying to, you know, grow that and get more people to the website. Um, and I basically use eBay as a free advertising hub. Uh, I don't know. I, it's probably goes against their, their, their rules, uh, but I don't, know, I don't really care um, if they kick me off, whatever. I'll just make more TikTok videos. So I'll, uh, uh, yeah, basically as far as eBay goes, I just slap my at koala in the basement on a lot of my bigger products, especially Pokemon products. So people, uh, gravitate to my Instagram page or my, uh, website. Um, so yeah, I've never had issues liquidating on eBay. I know that if you're a smaller seller and I, I mentioned this, uh, earlier in this video, uh, you will have to kind of maybe build up a small reputation, but even if you have, you know, 20, 30 ratings, it's really not that hard to get that. Um, you can even get that from like buying stuff. People will leave you buyer ratings and, you know, rare, it's rare that people, ch you know, check ratings that much, but anyway. Um, so yeah, I've never had issues liquidating. Um, there's a uh, fees as long as you don't have a terrible rating selling fake products. It's pretty hard to sell fake products on eBay. <laughs> you're gonna, you're either going to get taken off pretty quickly or no one's going to buy from you if you have a low seller rating. Now, as for, uh, so now here I mentioned, if you're planning on holding for five to 10 years, you're almost guaranteed to make a profit even with eBay fees. Um, and yes, I, I do really like, I pretty much believe that. I mean, like, unless Pokemon completely fails as an IP, which is highly, highly unlikely, uh, the nostalgia will always keep it afloat in my opinion. Um, you're almost guaranteed to make a profit. So, um, but obviously nothing is guaranteed. Um, but this is an amazing product this Pokemon 151. And this is the product that he's uh, interested in. Uh, it's an amazing investment, in my opinion, and it it has uh, potentially similar gains to what EV Heroes had in the past. And I'm I'm not gonna say that for sure. I can't say that for 100%. They're different products, but uh, the demand is there. Um, the print quality has been fairly con well controlled. Um, the price is sustained at a price that I remember seeing EV Heroes sitting at. Uh, I could definitely potentially see Pokemon 151 after it's out of print selling for four or five hundred dollars a box. I mean, I just um, just based on my previous history and, and um, my previous experience with with Pokemon and, and Japanese Pokemon product. Um, now, uh, here's the big question. Will this product outpace the potential returns you could get on your money if you invested in the stock market or the crypto market? Now, <clears throat> OK. Let's take a look at something. Um, I want to take a look at a rather higher risk growth stock. <clears throat> and I also want to take a, a, a look at a 
Pokemon Booster Box and the growth growth that it has had. So <clears throat> let's take a look at, and now I'm, I'm going to bring up a an English an English Booster Box. So here we go. Uh, actually, this is Apple. So this is Apple stock. Um, I was actually meaning to show Nvidia, um, but uh, this works. We can use this as a as a, an example as well. But I also want to show Nvidia. So we, in one year, <clears throat> year to date, um, we're looking in one year actually. Uh, you're looking at a 13% uh, profit on Apple if you took your money and put it in there. Uh, if you just bought this just straight up, and I'm not talking about um, calls or anything like that, that's a little complex, and oftentimes you end up losing money anyway. So 40% year to date. <clears throat> so let's say uh, the January of 2023 to to now. So if you invested in January in 2023, and then versus if you invested, let's say in uh, the same time last year, <clears throat> and now you only made about 13%. Let's go to Nvidia stock. Now, uh, year to date with NVIDIA, uh, about uh, in January 3rd, 4th um, of this year, if you invested then, you're looking at a 200% return on your money. That's pretty pretty great. And very little effort. You just put your money in there, and then you sell it once it gets up there, right? One year, we're looking at a 250 even. Uh, wait, that's even better. Look at that. So now let's take a look at EV Evolving Skies. Let's take a look at Evolving Skies. Here we go. So this is uh, the one-year chart. So this is from September. So right here, of September of 2022. And now to now. So we're at 440. And that's actually, it's kind of funny because here, 131. Look, they're even similar prices. So if, if you bought NVIDIA <clears throat> stock, let's say you wanted to buy 10 boxes of EV Evolving Skies back then. Right, you bought ten boxes, or you bought a sealed case, six boxes. Right, so here uh, let's just go with ten because I'm bad at math. So you got a you got a, a thirteen hundred dollars right in in Nvidia stock, and now all of a sudden you just turn that money in one year to forty five hundred dollars. Right now here we have uh, ten boxes of this for two thousand dollars, and now you turn that money into forty four hundred dollars. Right um, now. Yes, they're similar returns. However, Nvidia is still better. Obviously, that's just one stock. Obviously, that's you know, you if you invested in something like Apple, you wouldn't have had that return. Obviously, if you invested in something and and a lot of you know, if you look at Nvidia around around this uh, end of 2022 time, people were like, oh, it's going to zero, blah blah. blah. Uh, anyway, uh, it was it was a, a rather risky thing to invest in Nvidia. I don't think so, but I think that some people would have would agree with that sentiment. Now, the in time and energy investment in investing and buying ten of these stocks is very low. And then a year later, and by the way, if you hold for over a year, so if you hold for one year and one day, you don't have to pay capital gains tax on it. So as long as you're making less than, I believe, um, 40000 in capital gains after one year, you pay zero. And I'm almost positive that's the correct number. If someone, you know, has, uh, if, if that's not correct, then you can correct me in the comments. But I'm almost positive that up to $40,000 in capital gains, not even, not your invention, not like the total amount, it, it just the, the, the profit amount, <clears throat> excuse me, as long as you wait for over one year, you have to pay zero in taxes. Now on this, not only do you have to pay the fees for something like TCG Player or eBay, which is 13%, which is astronomical. And by the way, that's not 13% on the sale price. That's 13% on the sale, sale price plus shipping and taxes. So it's more like 14 or even like 15%, really. Um, and so <clears throat> basically you're making, you're putting in more effort because you now have to sell these boxes. You have to ship them out. You have to deal with the fees. And then on top of that, you have to pay taxes on this. You, 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 as long as if you're selling on these platforms, you have to, you have to pay the taxes. So now the government's dinging you there too. So not only are you making more money if you invested that same amount of cash into NVIDIA, there is significantly less time and energy investment 
and there is there are just less fees. There's, there's no real stock market fees. You can just do a uh, a limit uh, a limit sell and just sell at the exact price that you want. Um, the the if you use uh, almost all exchanges have no fees at this point, so you don't even have to worry about it. But even if there were, it's it's not nearly as high as eBay or TCG Player. So this this is I'm not trying to dissuade anybody, and this is a very particular example. And obviously, not everything is going to be like this in real life. There's going to be very v vastly different um, scenarios to consider for all of this. But it's just something that I want people to, to pay attention to, and, and it's something that I like to bring up to people who are who ask me about investing in Pokemon. And you know, you know, some people would say like, "Oh, you're you're an idiot! Like, you, why would you tell this to potential patrons who want to you know buy your products or whatever?" I'm still gonna sell my product. At the end of the day, I'm still gonna have customers to buy my product. People love Pokemon. I love Pokemon. It's not going anywhere. If someone comes to me with a genuine question like, hey, should I invest in this? Then I want to make sure that they know like, hey, if this, if you're strapped for cash, I don't know if you want to do this Pokemon thing. There's just better, easier solutions out there for you. Like the stock market's not dead. Crypto's not dead. These things are very much alive, you know, like even Bitcoin, man, like, I don't know. I'm really, really bullish about Bitcoin. I think if you buy some Bitcoin, you can make a good amount of of percentage return on your investment I, I really do and obviously i'm also bullish about pokemon but i guess uh, the the kind of the, the point i'm trying to make and let's go back to the main camera <clears throat> if i go back to my email the point i'm trying to make is that you should have a more broad range of investments and pokemon shouldn't be the the number one thing on your list like for me, it would be like stock market, crypto, and then alternative assets like Pokemon, stuff like that. Unless you're trying to do this like a shop or something like that, you know, it. that's just my opinion about it. Obviously, you know, NVIDIA is one example, but let's say you invested that money into Apple, then you'd be pretty happy that you bought the Evolving Skies boxes. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, there's less, there's less to worry about with Pokemon. So I will give it that. You don't have to go digging for potential, you know, companies that are good uh, profit uh, or that, that you see as a good potential, you know, um, uh, investment. Um, there's not as much, you, you know, it's like people like I saw Evolving Skies and I like Pokemon. So I saw Evolving Skies and I was like, dude, this set is going to be crazy. Like, I, I, I know I remember when they reprinted it and started selling for like 120, 140. I bought a bunch of boxes. I, I bought a bunch of cases, actually, because I knew I was like, dude. And now it's going for 400, 450. So <clears throat> I just knew, I, I, you know, it's easier to tell with Pokemon. That's, the, I will give it that, you know, you couldn't, it's, it, it wasn't super easy to tell with NVIDIA. You didn't know it was about to shoot up four times. You know, you, you didn't know you're about to make 200% on your money in one year. You thought that the stock was going to, you know, sit and stagnate for a while, you know. It would it, it, it is hard to tell, but as far as Pokemon goes, you know, it's it's very easy to tell the cycles. So it's it's definitely more going back to being guaranteed on profit. Um, it's definitely more um, uh, cyclical. So it's very easy to tell, like, okay, this set is in print. It has a high demand. They keep reprinting it, but the price is maintaining itself, like Pokemon 151. And uh, so, and there's co consistent demand for it, for this product. People are going to continue buying it. People uh, continue wanting it. They continue reprinting it, but the, the price does not fall below a certain threshold. And uh, once that set goes out of print, it's gonna it's gonna go crazy. Once sets go out of print, it's just guaranteed money, basically. I mean, it's just it, it just it 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 can't it can't not be. I know that's that's double, double negative, but. There's no unless Pokemon fails as an IP, as mentioned before, you're you're gonna make money. If a set goes out of print, people are gonna want that set later down the line, and it's just simple supply and demand. There's gonna be demand for it, and people keep coming into Pokemon, keep buying Pokemon cards. They're gonna be like, "Whoa, what's this cool card from the past that I didn't get? Oh, it's fifteen hundred dollars. Oh, a sealed box of the set is five thousand dollars. Okay, well, you know, maybe I'll save up and try and get that or whatever, you know." <clears throat> I'm just saying, or there'll be like box breaks where people will, will pay 500 a pack and then, you know, whatever. I'm just saying that with Pokemon, it's it's like that. 
the supply and demand of Pokemon. There will always be demand, or almost always, certainly, there will be demand for Pokemon, and the supply is controlled by a company. <laughs> so, <clears throat> anyway. Okay, anyway, we spent a long time on that topic, so um, let's just get into uh, uh, some more stuff here. Okay, so here I talk more about, so let's say you invest in Apple, uh, would it be some of the more risky assets like Tesla, Nvidia, I think are the right product potentially, but nothing is for certain. And once again, we come back to the idea of liquidity. So let's, yeah, let's talk about liquidity. Um, it's very, uh, actually, I guess we did talk about it, but basically it's very easy to liquidate stocks and crypto. It takes a lot more time and energy for Pokemon. Um, and uh, I did mention here, let's face it, time and energy is arguably the most valuable asset in the world. So, uh, so you have to ask yourself, is it worth it for me? Do you enjoy making listings online and talking to potential clients? Do you enjoy preparing shipments and everything else that comes with selling Pokemon products? Um, for me, the answer to those questions is yes. Um, I was looking to make this a business because I saw a lot of opportunity in it and I love trading cards. I, I've been playing Magic for like over 10 years. Um, I love Pokemon. I've collected it for a long time. Why Schwartz, etc. Um, but for you guys, um, it might be a different story. Um, so <clears throat> now I also go on to, to mention, I, I'm not saying that you have to make it a business, but if you are looking to heavily invest in a product or heavily invest in Pokemon, it's going to take some time and energy to, to liquidate it. So and um, all right, let's see. Now you can always sell it to a card shop. So yeah, there's always the option to sell big bulk to a card shop or uh, to a to a seller like myself. Um, but you're not going to get market price. You're going to get below market price because we have to make profit. Uh, and then so then you're not going to get the full return on your on your investment. Um, and so if you want the full return on your investment, time and energy is required. Um, so let's see, uh, hypothetical ideas, even as a small EV seller, I've never had any issues selling my cases on eBay. Yep, definitely, de definitely did not. Um, so he did have concerns about legitimacy. Um, I think it's, uh, so it's, it's hard to fake products um, and tamper. With, uh, there's a lot of videos that are talking about tampered products and resealed products. I think it's a bunch of BS. I, I'm sure they're out there, but I don't think it's as prevalent as people make it out to be. It's just the the negative, uh, um, the the social media fueled negativity machine. I like to call it. Um, and I've been buying stuff and selling stuff for a long time, and uh, I've come into contact with some fake stuff, like some fake games. But I, I've had one fake card of the thousands of cards I've handled. One fake card has come into my hands. So. Um, just you know buy from more reputable sellers uh if a seller has really bad rating or very few ratings you know it's uh, you know and i mentioned previously you know um it's not that big of a deal to sell if you have low rating and it really isn't because you can build it up very quickly by just selling good product you know and it, it very quickly you can build up your rating so <clears throat> So anyway, um, so if you, if you have your investments in place in both the stock market, crypto market, or, an, or another secondary market and would like to expand to Pokemon, that's a great idea. Yes, I definitely think Pokemon is a great investment. If Pokemon is something you want to invest primarily in, here are some tips that I think you can help you out. So my first tip is to diversify your product. I did mention this before. Um, I think Pokemon 151 is great, but I also don't believe in putting all your eggs in one basket. I think EV Heroes is a great um, set. I think uh, VMAX Climb, Max, uh, V Star Universe. Um, although I will say that V uh, EV Heroes a high entry point, uh, the margin, the profit on that might might you know it, it might take it a while for it to get to a thousand dollars a box, at least from my my kind of speculation on it. People, a lot of people aren't willing to pay a thousand dollars a booster box for a lot of boxes. Yeah, so diversify. Um, even though I mentioned later um, that, um, but if you see Pokemon 151 as an amazing product with potential for profit and it's very liquid because it's highly sought after, which is a big, big point, certain sets are good investments in terms of margin, but if no one wants them or if they're like not that liquid, not that many people are buying them, um, then I wouldn't really, f you know, uh, then they're not really that great. You know, the Pokemon 151, maybe the margins aren't as good as something like, uh, I don't know, even V-Star Universe or uh, VMAX Climax or something like that. Maybe the margins won't be as good as that, um, but uh, the liquidity will be great. It'll be high. It'll be very high. <clears throat> um, it's, if it's highly sought after, then I wouldn't fault you for going all in. Um, so yeah, I just want to make sure to give you guys all the options at your disposal. Uh, now, next part, dollar cost averaging. I know this works for stock market. I know it works for crypto. Uh, and it also works for Pokemon. 
do not FOMO into products because oftentimes there are many reprints. Um, that happens in English, it happens in Japanese. I feel like English is a little bit more sporadic. It's more difficult to ten tell when there's going to be reprints or maybe that's just because I pay more attention to Japanese market, but Japanese market reprints, uh, fairly, fairly easy to tell. They're very cyclical. They have released a statement uh, during the time of uh, the end of 151, uh, right when Black Rule of the Black Flame was coming out, Pokemon Company released a statement talking about how <clears throat> the initial wave will be a smaller print wave, so the price of the boxes will be high. So when it first comes out, it'll be high. You don't want to get in at that point unless you can get decent pre-order price and you're trying to like flip it right away for a high, uh, for a quick margin. Um, if you want to invest, you wait. You wait until the reprints. You wait for the price to settle down. Um, and uh, that same thing with 151. Right now is a great time to buy in. If you can get boxes at 150, 160, even 170, that's a great price, I think, because if they're going to be selling it for 400 potentially uh, a year or two years from now, I mean, that's 100% return on your on your profit, you know, so or potentially more. So, um, you know, it's uh, right now is a decent entry point. The, the price is stabilized. Um, but there is definitely a potential chance for another. Uh, there's almost 100% going to be another reprint. So the price could fall. And so if you can get it even cheaper, that's better too. So as far as dollar cost averaging goes, um, when it, w the way it works with Pokemon is that you would buy, um, like you know, you would buy a case um, like around this time. Then you would wait for the next reprint. Then you'd buy another case, and slowly kind of trickle your money into that instead of just getting like ten cases at once. You know, and I kind of mentioned that to him here. Pokemon 151 has already fluctuated many times. I've managed to get boxes at different price points with a pretty, with my average being pretty low compared to certain sellers, other sellers that I know. I do this by simply paying attention to the market and making sure to be up to date on reprints. When supply is running low and demand is still high, the price will go up. So that's a great time to try to sell as much as you can before the next reprint where the demand will be met and supply will resurge, um, driving the price down lower and then you can buy more product. Um, if you ever want to, okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's information you can readily find on social media platforms about reprints, stuff like that. Um, right now, Pokemon 151 is at a pretty good price overall and has stabilized compared to the original volatility we saw when the f when the set first dropped. I think buying in now is a good idea, but don't get FOMO and think you'll never get it at this price again. If you're patient, another big reprint could come later this year to satisfy the continued demand and the price could drop. So I'm very confident in that. So patience is always a good idea with anything in life. Um, I, would I would recommend buying maybe a case or two now and then waiting for the next round. Uh, most likely final reprint um, to buy more if you're still looking for more. Um, so yeah, just the last point is uh, don't FOMO. Um, just don't do it. It's just not worth it. Redo your research. Um, uh, make an educated decision and uh, you'll come out with profits. Um, look at all your options. Um, I definitely still think there's some big plays to be made on the stock market. Um, I definitely still think I, I wouldn't go into Nvidia though. I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch it personally. I think it'll drop back down, and then you go and pick it up. <clears throat> but that's just me. It's always going to be speculation. If you're looking to invest, just to throw your money somewhere and wait for it to grow, just buy some ETFs. Buy some Pokemon 151. Let it sit in your closet. Um, buy some uh, graded. Graded slabs by like um, the Umbreon, the Moonbreon, uh, PSA 10, the Japanese one or the English one, whatever. Um, just buy that, throw it in your closet. Um, buy some Bitcoin. Don't buy any other crypto, only Bitcoin. Um, and just sit on that and just trickle money into those things. And after five years of trickling money in, you'll see that money grow. And uh, it's just, it's boring, but it's, it, it is what it is. It's definitely safe. Um, now if you want to be more risky, um, there's a lot of great options for that too. Uh, and Pokemon is definitely one of them. Um, so, uh, just look out for the good sets. Pokemon 151 is a good set. V Star Universe is an amazing set. Definitely. V Star Universe, great set. Pokemon 151, great set. Evolving Skies. Probably... Uh, it's probably not that great anymore. I, I like a thousand dollars of for an English box of evolving skies. Ah, eh, maybe actually. Um, 
uh, what's that XY set? XY Evolutions. That's going for like almost a grand, but it's it's flatlined. It's it can't. But Evolving Skies is better. Evolving Skies is definitely better. Um, the chase cards are better. Um, the uh, the price of the chase cards is is better. Um, so yeah. Anyway, um, hopefully that uh, some of this information helps you guys out about Pokemon investing and investing in general. Um, it's fairly general information, and if uh, you know if you have anything that you disagree with me about, I'd love to hear it in the comments. To be honest. Um, because, yeah, I just like to hear different people's opinions. So just let me know in the comments. We can have a nice argument. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, so uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.